Hello there, my name is Shroomy and I'm so happy to have you here. Today we will be ranking all of Animal Crossing's different New Year's Eves and New Year's Day celebrations across all five games. The formula for all of them is pretty similar with a countdown to midnight and a subsequent fireworks show. I won't be talking about the fireworks though because I already did so in depth for my fireworks show ranking. Go ahead and check it out there. And on top of the New Year's Eve festivities, there also tends to be a few things to do on New Year's Day. All right, let's get into ranking with number five, Wild World. Oh, Wild World, I have so much nostalgia for you. In fact, my first time staying up until midnight for New Year's was actually while playing this exact event. However, the whole toning down events was a super dumb idea. This New Year's just doesn't have that much sparkle. Even the countdown board is the blandest of any. Also, the villagers don't gather at Town Hall for the countdown, which makes for a pretty sad celebration. However, one thing I do like is that this game started the tradition of handing out party poppers, and that is super duper fun. Also, the confetti is gold in this game, and I really like that. It definitely made me want to pop more poppers. And for New Year's Day, there's not much either. Tortimer just gives you a fortune for the new year. Mine was pretty bland. Overall, this New Year's celebration is the barest of bones. Number four, City Folk. This version of the event barely improved over Wild Worlds. The countdown board definitely got a huge upgrade, and I like the addition of the town flags a lot. But it's still just you and Tortimer, and maybe one random villager. It makes it hard to feel like it's an actual celebration at all. Also, they take control from you right when New Year's hits, so you can't even and pop your popper right at midnight. However, it's kind of a worthy cause since they are forcing you to see the fireworks show, so I kind of get it. As for New Year's Day, instead of a fortune, they give you a nifty little shirt. It has that year's zodiac on it, so in this case an ox, along with the year's number, which is pretty cool. Also, your villagers send you letters telling you their resolutions. It's a really cute touch that doesn't appear in any other games. Before moving on to number three, I have to mention something about Wild Rule and City Folk that I find hilarious. And that is that Tortimer is a party animal. Apparently I never knew this in all my years of playing before I, you know, usurped his position and banished him to a faraway island. But it is high key the best thing having this grandpa turtle tell you that he's gonna party the night away. <laughs> I love it. Number three, New Horizons. The newest of the New Year's Eve's events did not disappoint. Two things I look forward to most in an event are the items and the villagers actions. When it comes to items, this had the most of any game as they let you obtain all the items that were previously exclusive to certain regions. We got Berliners, 12 Great Plates, New Year Noodles, and the Sparkling Cider. The cider is especially fun with being able to hold it and raise it up. But I'm also really happy to be getting some food items. However, I'm very disappointed in these renders. They look incomplete. When I first set them out, I was terrified that food just wouldn't look good in this game, but then I remembered Thanksgiving and the food there basically had me drooling. So deliciously rendered food is 100% possible in New Horizons. I think they just ran out of time on these. Although this does give me more patience with Nintendo. Stuff hinting at cooking has been in the code for months now, so I've been wondering why are they holding out on us for so long? After seeing this though, well, it's probably because when they drop cooking, they're also gonna drop a couple hundred food items to go with it. And it appears rendering food to New Horizons standards is proving to be pretty difficult. Hopefully they will come back and re-render these for next year. Besides the food, they also have hats and light sticks. I like the hats all right, and I enjoy that there are so many colors and two variations, so you have something different to look forward to for your first few years. The light sticks look like mini lightsabers, so what's not to like there? Although I closed my switch for a few minutes, then I opened it back up and they all drew their sticks at once, and it was just a little bit intimidating. I felt like a battle was about to break out, but the small touch I love most to this event is when the villagers raise their sticks and count with each number, it really makes them feel like they're invested in the countdown too. Although, if you're anything like me, you look like an idiot raising your stick over and over at the wrong time. Luckily, villagers don't judge. Speaking of villagers, I love how many they managed to cram into the plaza, and the fact that they were all dressed in the nines to be there. I also love the zoom out they do so you can see the whole sign and all the villagers. In every game previous, I was doing this weird juggle to try and see the board while also trying to see at least one villager. In New Horizons, you don't have to compromise. All your sweet little friends fit in the screen. I also like the decor in this one. It's so fun to run through all the balloons and 
and see them jiggle. The countdown board is also very nice. You can tell Nook dropped some serious bellage on it, and I like that for the final countdown, they make the number nice and big in the middle. Really gets me hyped up. So all of that is really great, but my biggest problem with this event comes in the form of the next day. There's just nothing. Well, technically you can order some items from the catalog, but that's way more boring than getting it for free. It's just weird not having anything going on. Like at least they can mail you one of the items and say something a little sentimental. Despite the night before being really good, just bummed me out and ended up dragging this event down to three for me. Number two, New Leaf. This is all around a great event. The countdown board is looking pretty good and I love that they decorated it with balloons picturing the last year's zodiac. Although I will say the giant party poppers on top were a little disappointing. I was expecting crazy amounts of confetti and it was just a cute little amount. It's also nice that the villagers gather around the countdown clock. It's not as special as New Horizons since the villagers mostly gather behind the board. So if you choose to watch the countdown, you probably won't see them pull their poppers, but at least they're there. Oh, one thing that really took me by pleasant surprise was seeing the villagers in their New Year's hats. I can't think of any other time that villagers can wear hats in New Leafs, so it's super special seeing them in their cute little hats. And now for the real reason this event got second, sparkling flipping cider. And you may be thinking, um, that's a New Horizons too, to which I say, but can you do this in New Horizons? No, you can't. So this deserves second. Also, quick side note, the fact that you can't sip the cider in New Horizons makes me wonder if that's one of the things holding up the roost. Like, you could sip a cup of coffee before, so maybe they're still working on that before they can release the roost. Anyway, back to cider. This was exclusive to some countries. For other countries, Isabel gives you the food items we saw earlier, like the 12 grape plate. Anyway, I'm super happy to be having the cider. I feel so cool taking little sips of it in the midst of a party. It's one of those small things that really helps an event stand out since the only other handheld drinks you can get in game is coffee. Also, Red is here offering poppers and New Year's hats, which is kind of cool. I should also mention that I ragged on New Leaf's fireworks show previously for being very mismatched, but it seems that for New Year's they fixed that, and I like the show a lot more. Alright, I think that's it for Night Of. For New Year's Day, you'll find Isabel chilling in the plaza along with a cardboard cutout. The cutout is kind of a fun way to add a little more pizzazz to simpler holidays and fill out the plaza. It's also good for taking pictures of friends, but since this game has been out for seven years, I'm not exactly getting on a bunch with friends, so here's me and all the cardboard cutout faces. You're welcome. Anyway, if you talk to Isabel, she'll give you a nodding head of that year's Zodiac, which I just love. Their little baubles are just so cute, and I love the way they're designed. So much better than the t-shirt of City Book. All in all, it's a great event. Definitely leaves you with a lot of things to remember fondly. Number one, GameCube. This New Year's event really stands out compared to later ones. As the new year approaches, you and the villagers gather around the lake. The board isn't the most decked out, but when midnight hits the countdown flips to say New Year's and <laughs> that had me pretty dazzled. Tortimer also gives you a noisemaker, which doesn't do anything besides sit in your house, but I guess it's the thought that counts. And one last kind of weird thing before I get into the things that I actually like. As you all wait around for the new year, the villagers do this weird looking around thing. I'm not sure if it's a dance or if they're watching their backs for superstitious reasons, but it's kind of funny and cute. They also have someone standing at the board and they shout out when there's a certain amount of time left. It's kind of strange that they have a random villager do this instead of Tornimer, but having them yell out definitely builds up the hype and makes it feel like the villagers are noticing these key countdown points just like you are. I also really like talking to them. Out of all the games, they just seemed the most real. Like they had actual feelings about one year ending and another beginning. You also see a greater change in atmosphere. Throughout the countdown, the villagers are quietly doing their weird little head shakes, but as soon as the new year hits, they pop their poppers and burst out singing. I absolutely love this. The atmosphere just lights up and it makes me feel all sorts of excited to begin another year. But I think the biggest reason this plays first for me is that after midnight hits, this song plays wherever they aren't partying. And it makes me feel all sorts of warm fuzzies and a certain sorrow for the year that's passed but anticipation for the year that's to come. So Night Of already has all sorts of great stuff going down, but New Year's Day in GameCube outshines all others. You see, unlike all the others, your villagers actually gather for this event. If you go down to the wishing well that morning, you'll find a small group of villagers taking turns making wishes and throwing a coin into the well. If you interrupt the one at the well, they let you in to make a wish. It's very simple with you just choosing to throw a coin in, but nothing like this exists in any other game or at any other time of the year. In fact, before recording for this video, I never knew the wishing well at any point was used as a wishing well. It normally serves the same function as Isabel does now. So this actually making wishes in the wishing well is insanely cool and I love it. Definitely one of those small things that makes an event stand out years later. Another attraction that morning is Katrina who sets up a table at the well to hand out fortunes for the year. Much cooler than Tortimer handing out fortunes. 
Sorry, Tortimer. This is also super interesting since I believe this is the only time in any main series game where we see her outside her tent. And it's also pretty fun to get a little virtual fortune for the year to come. Here's mine. The whole dreams come true and fortune wait has me pretty excited, but the health not so good is kind of frightening. So I went ahead and got another one. Ah, looking good. That's much better. Oh, Tortimer also gifts you a journal, which is fitting for a new year, but you can buy one anytime at Nooks, so it's not all that special. All in all, both days of the event offer unique experiences that really help the event stand out in my mind more than any of the other ones. There you go, my thoughts on the many new years of Animal Crossing. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see more holiday rankings, there's a playlist there with Toy Day, Turkey Day, and Halloween. And for those waiting on the next Remaking My New Leaf Town and New Horizons, it should be out next week, unless it proves to be stupid time consuming, then it will be the week after next. Anyway, I wish you all the best in 2021.